In a September 25th email to Governor Snyder, his chief of staff wrote, the real responsibility rests with the county, city, and KWA, referring to an area water authority. Dennis much more continued, but since the issue here is the health of citizens and their children, we're taking a proactive approach. Much more retired yesterday. Just days after that email, the governor announced the severity of the city's water problem after he said he received confirmation of lead contamination. From the governor's office right down to the person who turned the valves and opened the spigots to water filled with lead poison. Those expressing shock at what's happening in Flint, Michigan are kidding themselves and insulting anybody with an IQ over seven. Here we have elected officials who knew the dangers of what they were doing, yet sat back and watched another facet of American infrastructure crumble. And if you think this is an isolated incident, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let's begin there. Spin the big prize wheel around the dial. Stuff on the nationally syndicated talker who fears no issue and no snapback. Damn it, that's what makes him good for this show. President of EpicTimes.com, our weekly visit with Jerry Doyle. Jerry, welcome in, my friend. Let's get right to it here in Michigan here, because here we have people going back and forth. The governor saying, wait, we didn't know. The governor's aide saying, yes, we did know. People saying it should have been the responsibility of the people in Flint themselves. Jerry, this is endemic of the problem in this country. Everybody looking for somebody else to blame and not one elected official willing to say, we screwed up. Let's get it right. Two or uh, three word phrases, Ed. Follow the money and pass the buck. If you follow the money, you'll find out why they shifted from where the water was coming from to where they were going to get it from. And pass the buck is the name of the game. When the city wants to blame the state, the state wants to blame the feds. But all I know is for two years, people, and in particular children, and children have always been our gateway drug to compassion because when they try and sell us on something, they always use the children. You don't want Miho to die at the border. You don't want Miho to drown in the ocean. Well, kids have been eating and drinking lead for two years. People have been paying inordinate amounts of money for lead paint that looks like honey, if you've seen any of the pictures of the people walking around with the jars. And now everybody says, well, we have to, we have, to have a new political structure. We have to be able to get the right people in place to address this. What do we got to do? Wait for the presidential election? The next January 20th, 26th? 17, then the new president sits down and says, we have to get to work. They can't wait. This is something that needed to be done yesterday. But if you follow the money, there's a reason this was done. Supposedly it was done for cost cutting. But if you follow the money, you'll find crony capitalism, you'll find nepotism, and you'll find somebody that's making a ton of money while these people and these kids are literally losing the quality and quantity of their lives. And let's be honest, this is Flint, Michigan right now. This is ready to happen in most major cities around America right now because, as you called it, that crony capitalism sits in every city right now. And we keep putting these capitalists, these cronyists, if you will, we put them in office, Jerry. We never get it right. And we don't take these people to court, send them to jail where they belong. Well, yesterday on the program, I was talking about um, acts of civil disobedience. You know, there was a bunch of school teachers uh, in Michigan that didn't teach that day and they closed the schools down because of the crappy conditions of the schools. And I said, how do you get the attention of these stooges in Washington, D.C., and these governors and these mayors that don't pay attention to the people? Well, the teachers got the attention of the parents who probably lost out on some daycare for their kids, but they made a statement. How do you get the attention of people who say Obamacare is a bust? Does everybody cancel their health insurance on the same day and use the emergency room as a primary care physician? I'm not suggesting you do that. Does everybody stop Stop paying their federal taxes because what's the conversation in the Oval Office, Mr. President? We have some news for you today. What is it? Everybody in the country cancel their uh, Obamacare. What? Yeah, everybody cancel their Obamacare. Well, what are we going to do? Uh, we could lock them all up. No, we can't. That's a lot of people. Uh, we could find them. We could tax. No, they're not going to pay that either. Uh, what could we? Oh, we could listen to the people and find out just how ah. crappy Obamacare is. And the same thing with federal taxes. Everybody, you know, we complain and we complain and we complain, but we don't do anything about it. We're mad as hell, but obviously we're going to take it some more. I got about 60 seconds left here. Let's get to this. You mentioned the president. Let's talk about him now with what Sarah Palin said yesterday, basically politicizing PTSD to talk uh. about her kid who was arrested for domestic violence, mentioning the president. Jerry, I have spoken and have heard from at least 20 different veterans that I know. Not one agrees with her, and every single one of them has said, Jerry, why don't you go home and take care of your kids first and stop trying to politicize PTSD? Exactly. Um, go home, Sarah. Uh, 
Donald Trump doesn't need you. The Republican Party needs you. God knows the country doesn't need you. We've seen this movie already. We didn't like it the first time. We're not going to like the sequel. But the thing about Sarah Palin, and you know a little bit about Screen Actors Guild and acting and uh -huh. Hollywood and all that, there's nothing more desperate than people seeking fame, and there's nothing more desperate than that than people seeking to get fame back. This is a moth to the fame flame. Go away. Take care of your family and stop using veterans and veterans issues as an excuse for your kids bad behavior i don't know why but the word despicable comes to mind to me jerry because i'm in big Absolutely. favor of a lot of people and the veterans that i know what do you think good word to use despicable yeah we could probably get away with that on tv um i could go at other places but that would be expensive it's a good idea i mean and quite frankly you and i both know when you mentioned sag it just i don't know why jerry but this just looks to me like somebody who's trying to poke around for another tv gig somewhere down the road I look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's exactly what this is at. It's all Sarah all the time. You know, her husband, Todd, does those Iditarod runs. It's like 1,100 yep. miles, 40 below zero, mushing a dog sled team. He's the only <laughs> guy that crosses the finish line and says to the dogs, one more time, because he doesn't want to go home. We're going to leave it there. Jerry Doyle, always a pleasure, my friend. See you next week. Make sure you go to epictimes.com and find out exactly what's cooking. The hard line continues.